Will my dash camera record for 24 hours? And will my car battery die from installing a dash camera? We're going to answer that and more in this episode. This is version two. We are going to go a lot more in depth than we have on any of our prior videos. We actually have four of our most popular dash cameras. We put it on the bench. We're going to test total current draw. We're going to show you. So we're going to have the iRoad X11, Thinkware U1000, Thinkware F200 Pro, and our GNAT Geon 3. And we are going to give you the breakdown of what the current draw is in parking mode. We even go as far as giving you the difference of energy saving mode on the U1000, energy saving mode with the radar sensor, and motion detection. So we're going to give you all that information. We're also going to show you how to take that information and find out how long you will be able to record in parking mode if you decide to use a power cell. Because the problem right now is you look on Amazon, $49 for a dash camera and 24 hour parking mode. It's total crap. You can't get 24 hour parking mode on these $49 cameras. And even on the majority of the cameras on the market, your battery will not support it on the majority of parking modes that are available. So you need to be prepared. You need to understand what you're getting into. And I always want to make sure to explain this to my customers that you are not going to get 24 hour record time because your battery is not going to support it. So it just depends if you're worried about while driving or if you're worried about while parked. It's two completely different things, but I know a lot of people want parking mode. So we're going to dive right into here and there's a lot of information that we're going to give, be giving this out. And if you have questions, please ask below, comment below, because there's probably going to be a lot. <laughs> so first things first, what is low battery protection? So all of these dash cameras that we currently offer at Safe Drive Solutions have low battery protection. What that means is you can set a specific voltage where if the dash cam, if the vehicle's voltage drops below that set voltage, the dash camera will shut off to protect the battery of the car. Now, I always recommend that this is set for 12 volts or higher. Now, why would you want this? Well, the main key reason why you want this is because you don't want to come out in the morning and your battery is dead because the dash camera was recording all night. So the setting is something that needs to be in there so that you can get to work, so you can drive around, you know, so you can bring the kids to school. Whatever you need to do, you want to make sure that that car starts. Hi, so what you're going to see in the following test is a multimeter hooked up to the constant power line. That way we can get the correct current draw of all these dash cameras in parking mode. We also will have the ignition line. We're going to disconnect the fuse and by doing this, we will be throwing the dash camera into parking mode. All of the dash cameras will be a two channel configuration, so front and rear, except for the Geon 3, which will have all three cameras hooked up to it. We also are gonna be using a power supply, that way we can regulate and keep the voltage completely the same, and it's a completely controlled environment. Anyways, watch and learn. Parking recording will now start. Parking recording will now start. Parking recording will now start. Disconnect. 
connected from a smartphone. Records in parking mode. So, now that we've done all the testing, you can see exactly what the current draw is. You may be confused, like, why do I want any of this information? What am I going to do with it? Well, if you are genuinely interested, like, worried about parking mode and you want it to be, you know, working 24 hours a day, maybe you have some mischief going on, maybe, you know, someone's keyed your car, maybe you've had some challenges happen to you, and, and you want to make sure that you actually have 24-hour parking mode. Well, now we've given you uh, basically a formula. If you're looking at a power cell, you take the power cell rating, divide it by the current draw, and that will give you your potential hours of recording time. So now, you know, you take something like an iRoad X11 and you divide that like 6,000 milliamp hours, divide it by the 250, and you're going to get about 24 hours of parking mode. So now you get your 24 hours of parking mode. Now, the big thing too with all these power cells is to fully charge them, you typically have to drive about 40 minutes per day, 40 to 45 minutes per day. So if you're a commuter, awesome, you're going to get it charged. However, if you're someone who's working from home all day, like maybe, maybe you're working from home now and all you, all your day consists of is Hey, I need my Timmy's. I need to go get my Timmy's coffee. I need to get my Starbucks coffee. And maybe you hop in your car and drive five minutes and drive back. You're not fully charging it up either. So, you know, I just really want to make sure that people don't have a misconception of what these systems do for you. The main purpose of a dash camera is to protect you in case of an accident and to be able to tell your side of the story. And too many, uh, too many people are thinking that they should be the same as Wi-Fi cameras in, uh, like at your home, where they can monitor 24 hours a day, and they're hooked up to 115, and they're constantly on. Your vehicle needs to be moving, it needs to be charging, your alternator needs to be charging your battery, your battery needs to be in good health. As long as all those things are good, you know, it just comes down to what you want out of that camera in parking mode. We've given you a lot of information. And like we said, if you have questions, really hope you ask. We are here to help. And hopefully this wasn't confusing at all. Really, we just want to make sure to try and educate.